OK, so my presentation is going to be on the Django Web Framework. Uh, a brief overview. I'm going to go over the basics of how Django works. And then I'm going to set up a simple Django app and go over the pros and cons of uh, Django. In a comparison to technologies we've learned in this course, like Node, React, and uh, Express. And uh, so what is Django? Django is a, a really popular Python web framework. And one of their uh, big draws is that it works out of the box. And it comes with a lot of features already uh, built for you. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you do anything. It follows the model view controller architecture. So uh, the model is just your data. The view is the, the actual presentation and how the data is displayed when you uh, can see it. And then the controller actually bridges the model and view. So in, if you were in Django, like how this works is you'll have a HTTP request. Um, it'll go into the URLs first. Uh, this is just a file that uh, basically routes where your sh a URL should go. Um, afterwards, it'll go to your view, and then you can get uh, data from your model if you want, or read and write to it, and then your view will just send back your HTML template. Uh, so the app we're going to be building is just a really basic uh, blog. It'll list a bunch of posts on the main page, and then uh, you'll have a page to make a post. So let's get started. OK, so the first thing we should probably do is uh, make a view that will just return hello world just to make sure that uh, this app works. So the basic file structure I've already created, so I don't have to go through the initial setup. But the initial setup, if you wanted to do it, is just a, like one or two commands, so it's not too difficult. So uh, right here, you have your uh, views and your models and your uh, URLs all here, and then in the templates, you'll have your view. So this is like your HTML you can send to people. So the first thing we probably want to do is make a actual view that'll respond with hell world just to see if we can get a server up and running. So right here, I've already made a view. So this view is just your index view, and it'll return a HTTP response that says hell world. So another thing we have to do is also have a, our URL, our URL um, uh, router. So what this will do, this line is just, um, will take in uh, regular expression as the first argument. This regular expression will match what uh, someone puts in their URL. So then if you, um, if the regular expression matches what they entered into their URL, it'll then go to the views index and then perform the logic that I wrote in here. So right now this should work and let's just see what happens. So this is just starting the uh, like a server just to test stuff. It's not something you use in production. Okay. Oh, I named this app blog. So every uh, URL is going to be prefixed with blog, and it looks like it works. So that's like a basic hello world. So the next thing we want to do is be able to actually have a blog post. So we're going to want to make a model for that. So in Django, they already have a like a models library you can use. And so I already defined a model here. So a blog post is just going to be composed of text, which is a char field, and also a time it was created at, which will be automatically added. And this, so this is the model here. It's, this is just the class, and it's being subclassed from one of their models. So it inherits all the stuff you need for a model in Django. OK, uh, so what we'll also need is the index should now return uh, a list of all your blog posts. So now that when you go to the index, instead of going to this one, it'll go to this one. And this index is just going to get all the blog posts from your blog post model that I imported. And then it's going to put it, 
take a context, which is just going to be a list of key value pairs where the value is all the blog posts here. And we're going to feed that into a template. Like if you're using uh, Nunjux or Jinja, if you're more familiar with those templating engines. Uh, so then all uh, we need now is to make sure that we have our template. So our template, it should just return the index HTML template. And this index is just going to take in our blog posts that I put into the context earlier. And it's going to put all those in a list. So let's see if it returns. OK, nice. So these are just some pre-populated -pop, uh, blog posts that I put in here. Um, so one thing you might also want to do is if you wanted to check if this worked and you had no seed data, uh, Django has an admin built in. So you can just go to And I already made a user, and you can do that in the command line. It's not too much code. Uh, wrong username. Yeah, so Django already has like uh, users and like user authentication if you want to use that. You have groups that you can use for different users if you want to do that. And also, uh, here's our blog post. So you can really quickly just, if you want to test something, just like make a blog post and then should appear here. Okay, nice. So now we just need to be able to post the, uh, be able to post uh, blog posts. So we're going to need a URL for that. So I'm just going to make a uh, blog post URL that will redirect to a create blog post view. And then this view will actually perform the logic of making your blog post. So uh, before I go over that, I should talk about the form. So if you have, um, if you want to have a form and you want to tie it to a model in Django, it's actually not too complicated. So you can just uh, import their model form. And this is a file called forms, and it just has all the forms that you want to use for a project. And then you can take in, uh, this is a class that's subclassing for model forms, so it inherits all the stuff that you need for it. And then it has an inner meta class. And then this model says, OK, I want this form to be for the blog post, which I defined in the models here. And then it's, uh, it takes the fields to uh, say what fields you want to be in the form. So all I'm doing in this view is I'm saying that if it's a get request, uh, just send an empty form back to the user. So you pass the form into the context and just send it into, uh, back to the user. But if it's a post, we're actually going to take in the post data and then uh, we're going to check if it's valid and save. And this is really interesting because save will actually, since you hook this form up to the model, uh, just make another instance of your model. So you don't have to do uh, too much form validation since it's a lot of it's already built in. And then if uh, the form post request succeeds, you'll just re uh, redirect a blog. So we'll also need our uh, view for the form. And the view is pretty simple. It's just a form. Uh, this is where the form is going to post to. And here's the actual form in here that I'm passing in through the uh, view. So this should work. All right, nice. So here's the form. So the form validation, some of that's already here. So if you hit submit and there's nothing in there, it'll tell you. And that's already there. So you don't have to worry about coding that yourself. And then if you wanted to uh, actually try to submit this, and let's see if it works. Yeah, so it worked, and you can see it on the blog page. Sorry, I can't see the mouse. OK, yeah. So that's the basic uh, app. OK, so what are the pros and cons of using Django? So a nice thing about using Django is that a lot of features are already included, so you don't have to set them up yourself. And a lot of, like, um, for the model and view controller, 
they basically have written parts to do each of those things, like the views, the models, and the uh, HTML uh, templating system you can use that they have. And they all work very closely together. So you can have like the model form I was showing you, and you don't have to write code that'll patch them all together if you're using like Express and SQLize and uh, React. Um, so it's also very configurable. If you want to use a different template system, you can just change that in the set. There's like a settings file, and you can change that if you want. And you can also change like the database in the back end. And it's pretty dry. Like there wasn't too much code I had to write to do that. Uh, so some of the negatives are that it's somewhat opinionated, meaning that it's giving you a way to do things, and then it's not giving you separate parts like Express, where you just have uh, you can use Express, and then you can use anything you want with Express, and it's not going to be a hassle to change parts out. But for Django, it's, it kind of gives you everything, and then uh, somewhat expects you to be able to use their tools, but their tools will work well together, at least uh, within the Django framework. So it's not as flexible. So if you have something very specific you want to do, it might not be as good if you want to do it first. If you, if you want to do something like that. And that's it. <laughs>